no lands horribly. Um, and, and I think the, the question is, how do we become the sort of people um, who are humble and penitent in our own lives? In other words, we've, you know, we've dealt with the plank in our own eyes before we start fiddling with specks in other people's eyes. How do we become that sort of a person so that when we do have conversations, uh, people experience um, our, our love and care for, uh, for them as we try and puzzle through? Um, the, one of the many things that may be going on that are, that are causing troubles and, uh, and difficulties for them. Um, so um, just expand on, on that just briefly. Um, okay, so final session, we, uh, we're going to try and um, stand back and say, how, what, what will it look like um, for our church, your church, my church, um, to be a community that engages really wisely, really well, really compassionately, um, uh, and with um, with blessing to people who like us struggle in these kind of areas. That you know, what, what, what does a community look like that does that? Um, it's an important question um, for, for at least a couple of reasons. It, it's important because God is pretty clear, it seems to me, in Scripture um, about wanting His people to do this. Um, you think how. Ezekiel um, spoke to the leaders of the Old Testament people of God in, in profoundly condemnatory ways because their leaders had not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured and brought back the strays or searched for the lost. Um, shepherding God's people you must always have the needy in mind. Um, and um, Shepherding um, the church of God, um, shepherds should know that they are first of all needy people before they are shepherds of needy people. Um, second reason um, to, uh, to, to want to do this is because we live at a time uh, when the language of mental health struggles um, and um, the experience of, um, of trouble in this area is pretty much at an all-time high. Um, uh, Mind, uh, the charity, um, in, in a 20... Uh, th these are some of the most widely quoted figures um, based on a 2014 health survey. Um, one in four people experience a mental health problem each year. One in six uh, report a mental health problem in any given week. Now... Of course, you know, the things I was saying earlier on about the medicalization of life and you know, what, what, what is being included in, in those kind of categories, that all kicks in. Um, but, but the fact that our society is using this kind of language um, and um, the, the fact that people are, are reporting this kind of level just, just says that there is so much of, of this experience to be engaged with in ourselves and in other people. Um, it, but it, put it in another way, each week um, of 100 people, eight people are experiencing uh, anxiety and depression, six with a generalised anxiety disorder, four with PTSD, three uh, with depression, two with phobias, one with obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, you've got a church of 100 people. Um, you know, do... do do you know who these people are? Hopefully you do, but maybe you don't. Um, um, the increasing prevalence of, of, of these problems um, goes hand in hand with, with an increasing squeeze on the, the resources available. I tried to capture this graphically a few months ago. Um, I don't know if this helps. If, if you imagine that... Um, triangle, pyramid, whatever it is, um, as everyone who is struggling with a mental health difficulty. Um, and it's wide at the base because there are lots of people with 
milder struggles, and it's narrow at the top because it's a smaller number of people with the more severe struggles. Um, well, you, you will understand that there is a threshold that you need to reach before you get specialist input. Um, there is only so much mental health expertise available, um, and um, rightly that is focused on the, um, the people with the most severe struggles. Um, and so it carves off, um, as it were, that, that apex of the, of the triangle. But, but if we're saying that, um, that the, uh, the, the triangle has got bigger, there are more people, um, well, there is not a vast increase in specialist help. Um, we still have the same sort of apex of the triangle being, uh, being carved off. Um, and it means two things. It means the threshold has risen. Um, and it means, um, therefore, simultaneously, that there are both more people who are struggling without any professional input, specialist input from the medical health services, mental health services. And it also means that the, the severity of those people who are not getting any input um, has risen. Um, um, it, it looks like that. Um, a friend who works in liaison psychiatry, that is that um, she, um, uh, she looks after people who find their way or, or need, some, need some input from, from mental health services um, in a sort of, in another context, maybe in A&E or on an um, on a, on a, on a outpatient or an inpatient ward for, for some other reason. And uh, she might get called in. And, and her comment to me um, a few months back was she has never known a time like it in the NHS where people who are struggling with really significant mental health struggles, um, people with um, psychotic symptoms, um, she is being asked to refer back to general practice um, rather than for them to be able to find their way into psychiatric outpatients, um, such as the pressure um, on the services at the moment. What does that mean? Um, it seems to me that that, that, that means that there is both um, a great responsibility and opportunity for the church. Um, our society is becoming increasingly clear that it cannot cope. It does not have the resources available um, to engage with all of the people who, who are struggling in this kind of way. And there are very few kind of um, communities, um, organisations um, that have any ability to be able to step into that zone. The church is probably just about the only one left. Um, so we have both the responsibility to, because there, there will be people in our church families who are, you know, who have got struggles in this area and are not getting any uh, any expert help, and we need to love them well. But there are also people in the community around us. Uh, for whom that is true, um, and an opportunity for us to bless um, the um, to, to bless the the community, and, and indeed to commend Christ um, in all sorts of ways. Um, how do we how do we do that? I, I, I'd love us to, to do it in ways that are um, that, that are, as it were, eager um, rather than reluctant. You know, oh dear, we've you know we, we need to look after these people. Um, you know, that would be a terrible thing to, to step into um, um, into this area in that kind of way. Um, we, we want to do it sort of eagerly to say, what a, what a, what a, you know, what a what an opportunity, what a calling from the Lord to care for people who are struggling um, and to do so um, in love of Christ. Um, I think that. Um, our churches should have a disproportionately, um, a disproportionately large number of people with these kind of difficulties in them. I think that should be our experience. And I think it should be our experience for two reasons. One is people who, who struggle like this are aware of their need. You know, it's obvious to them. 
um, and needy people um, uh, find their way to Christ because he meets people in their need. But secondly, I think our churches should have a disproportionately large number of people compared to the, the rest of the population with these kind of struggles because we love them so well. Because when they come to our churches, they think, wow, these people care for me. These people have time for me. Uh, these people listen to me. These people love me. Um, I love being in this church. Uh, because in other contexts, I'm ignored uh, or looked down on. These people don't do that. I'm not sure that's true of my church. Don't know if you're instantly thinking, yeah, we're just like that. My, my guess is that we recognise that we don't do that nearly as well as we should. That actually, a lot of the time, people with these kind of struggles probably hide them more in church than they do elsewhere. So let's ask the question, why? Uh, what gets in the way? If, 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 if in, a, in a sentence or two, or you know, I, I've tried to say to you, here's something to aspire to that our churches are really good in this area. I simultaneously want to say, I don't think we often are. And I'd certainly say that of my church. Um, and my question is, why not? What gets in the way? If we sense that this would be a good thing for us to do, um, what, what, what barriers are there that stop us from engaging well with those who are struggling with their mental health? Um, take a moment or two to, to have a think about that. I'm, I'm looking for at least five or six um, obstacles but you don't need to find all five and six if six of you found one each we'd be there
I think there are, I think there are lots and lots of ways of, of answering this question. Um, uh, and, there'll be, and there'll be many that I've not thought of um, that you may have. So, um, so I, I, think there's, I think there are lots of elements. Um, anyone want to suggest some that have occurred to you? What gets in the way of us doing well in this area? Yeah. Yeah, um, thank you. Um, uh, sorry, uh, slightly dull that I have to repeat everything, but um, yeah, the, the, the way in which um, some of us, many of us, um, do do appreciate things that are nice and, and ordered and sorted, and um, these these kind of issues um, make very clear that life and people are not ordered and sorted. Um, and we don't like that. Um, intriguingly, um, and maybe we'll explore this in a bit, probably that ends up being quite good for us, doesn't it? To, to be reminded that life is messy. Um, and actually there's some, probably some spin-offs for, for the whole church community. But, but yes, you're right, we resist it. Um, uh, let's have one or two more. Yeah, beautifully expressed. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're terrified of saying the wrong thing. We don't feel as though um, we, we understand. Um, so we say nothing and we make people feel worse as a result. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, we, we, we just wonder, what, you know, what, what am I going to be letting myself in for? Um, and we might well be right that, that actually... Um, step into this situation and there, there is going to be um, a great deal of time and energy um, in order to care for somebody well and, and, and we retreat from it as a result. Yeah, thank you. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah, um, so something connected with the, 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 the culture of our church, the way in which we speak to one another, the things that we, we give time to. Um, and yes, I mean, if we turn up at our home group and, and our home group has got a sort of, you know, a, a 65, 70 minute Bible study that the leaders want to get through. Um, and then, you know, we would like to have a nice 20 minutes chatting about last night's football um, uh, first. Oh, yeah, no, we must pray for five minutes at the end. That's right, I remember. Um, you know, the evening's gone. Yeah, exactly. Um, thank you. Um, one, one or two others, yeah. Huh. I'll expand that second point just slightly further. I think I know where, where you're going with that. Of, of what he might be able to achieve. Yes, okay, okay. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, thank you. So, um, sorry, what was your first point again? I just have to repeat for the text. Oh, yeah, the lack of sexual love. Thank you. Um, yes, j j just the... Um, which, which applies in so many areas of, of how well we care um, uh, for people in our church community that, that we, we do it on our terms rather than in, in a sacrificial way. Um, um, but, but, yes, also... 
underestimating both what God can do in the lives of others and being unappreciative of all that he has done for us that makes us respond to him. Thank you. Um, other things? Um, I'll go to the back and then to you. Yeah. Just two things. First, sometimes churches, uh, which many think are not doing as much as we would like them to do, are doing things. I think we can accept that. When you throw to people's lives, you're dealing with health and finance and everything things that have to be given. It's just a bit of a wise way to look at it. In case we judge our churches. And the other thing is a barrier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, uh, again, just repeating things. Um, the, the, I, I, yeah, I appreciate your point about... Um, we, we don't want to over-engineer our churches um, so that everything needs to be part of a system and an organisation. And in that sense, we hope that lots of things are going on um, that, that many of us are unaware of. Uh, because it's just spilling out of the, the good, healthy relationships and care uh, that exist uh, among brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and then, yeah, your second point um, of, of what there is within you know, male friendships um, uh, and expectations of, of those friendships that, that perhaps traditionally and still today don't make as much space for, for honesty and vulnerability, um, and how do we how do we shift that? Okay, so this is this is not a judgment of my church. That's the first but but it's a judgment that, that sometimes people do need to judge. I think the churches perhaps we shouldn't, but perhaps sometimes sometimes the church in jail would get more of that. The other thing I'd say is that that the the comment that was made about not speaking to somebody. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. The, the experience of. Um, which, which I, I'll say a bit more about this in a moment, but it, it ties in with. Um, again, I think it's, it's, a, it's, also, it's almost a cultural issue. What is the culture of our church in relation to success, failure, um, need? Um, okay. Um, um, Let's um, let me let me just sort of chip through some of these um, that, that we've just been thinking about. Um, really helpful. Um, I, I wanted to start off with the the idea that this isn't our business; that we ought to leave it to the experts. Um, and that's why I spent a chunk of time in the very first session of the day um, in in trying to persuade you that that these are things that scripture speaks into, these are things that ought to be our concern. Um, I, think, I think tied in with that is um, that, that perhaps we haven't done as much thinking as we, as we should, we're not as, as good as, as we could be about bringing the Bible to bear upon uh, the struggles of life. Um, it, it, that, that sort of divide that I was talking about in the first session um, you know, um, our Christian faith is good for spiritual activities, you know, praying and reading the Bible and, and, and witnessing to other people. Um, and then there's all the rest of life that needs to be got on with. But, you know, we, we somehow don't bring those together. Um, we, don't, we, don't see, um, we don't see the way that God speaks into to all of life. Uh, feeling de-skilled and untrained, we talked about that. Um, fear of doing harm. Um, uh, I think that, that that's very real, too time-consuming. Um, stigma, I, I think um, that sort of came out in what you were saying about people being reluctant to, to speak. 
Um, stigma certainly has decreased, doesn't it, in relation to mental health problems. Lots of, um, lots of prominent people in the public eye have been willing to talk about their mental health struggles, and I think that certainly has made it easier to do so. But I don't think it's gone away. Um, I think... Uh, um, um, confidentiality and privacy... Um, that's an interesting one. Um, I think it ties with stigma. Um, it, you know, that there's a difference, isn't there, between between saying, um, "Oh, I've you know, I've just been um, struck down with um, with shingles, um, and I've just been struck down with obsessive compulsive disorder." I know. I think we we would all know a sense that one would be easier to talk about and indeed have our church pray about than the other. Um, so, so that raises issues of confidentiality and privacy. How do we speak about this in our, in our church communities? And how do you work with mental health professionals? What is the relationship between church and, and, and them? That, that too sometimes can be a bit puzzling for us. Um, so let's, let, let's chip through some of these. Um, what can we do in church to reduce the stigma people feel about their mental health struggles? Um, let's do this on the fly. Um, you're, you're doing so well. Um, anyone want to suggest? What, what, what could your church be doing? What is it doing to make it easier um, or to reduce the stigma that people feel about mental health struggles? Any suggestions? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, th that we speak about it from the front and that, you know, for those of us who are preachers, um, that when we, you know, when we're trying to think how does this speak into our lives, the realm of, you know, mental health struggles is not off limits. So, for example, um, and to, to slip into other areas, um, if we are talking about passages that address male-female relationships, will we speak about domestic abuse? Because if we don't, if we never speak about domestic abuse, um, the message that we are conveying is that domestic abuse doesn't happen in our community. That's why we don't have to talk about it. And therefore, if you are in a situation where you're experiencing domestic abuse, the, the message you're hearing is don't talk to us about it. Don't tell us, because you're not supposed to have that experience. That's not supposed to be happening to you, and we don't want to hear about it. That's why we never talk about it. Um, uh, so if, if, if we don't apply in our preaching the experience of alcohol addiction, same thing. We don't think anyone here um, could struggle um, with being addicted to alcohol. That's why we never talk about it at the front. Um, so if that's your experience, keep it to yourself, please. Do you, you see how that works? Um, so, you know, just, just stepping into those zones. It, it doesn't mean you need to, you know, speak for an hour on it. Just mentioning it in passing, um, you know, will make a big difference. Because somebody suddenly thinks, oh, oh, so I'm not the only one. Great, thank you. Um, other things we could do. I was just going to say, prayer ministry would be possible in our old church. You never went in broken and left not being like someone cared. Like, just being able to pray for people at the end of the service, making that space where they can talk. And there's that confidentiality. Everyone used to go out for coffees. And the room that we had our services in, we'd then do prayer ministry. And it just massively, massively helped people with mental health struggles to know that, especially on Sunday, they can go in broken and come out at least knowing God loves them. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which, which ties to the comment at the back about, you know, sort of our expectations of, you know, the, the God um, is a God who is active and he's attentive and he's, um, and he's to, to, to be spoken to on these things. So, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Um, testimony from people um, who have grappled with these things. Better still, who are grappling with these things. 
I mean, how often we, you know, we, we love to put people up front. You know, I, I used to have this terrible, terrible difficulty and God has stepped into my life and, and things are marvellous now. And, you know, that, that, that's better than not doing it. But it still leaves the person who's in the midst of the thinking, well, I've prayed and God hasn't stepped into my life. Um, so they're a success. That's why they're up front. I'm a failure. I'll keep quiet. Um, so much better to, to have a testimony from somebody who... Um, has experienced um, a battle with bouts of depression coming and going over 20 years, and this is the way that they continue to seek to work out their discipleship in the midst of that experience. Uh, you know, how valuable is that if, you know, if somebody is, is willing to, to make themselves vulnerable and, and speak in that way? And, of course, we've got to care for people very much if, if we're going to invite that, um, but, it, but it makes a big difference. Thank you. Um, other, other thoughts how do we reduce stigma what other things can we think of what are the books on your bookstore do you have, do you have any books that address these kind of issues um, that says a lot doesn't it the person who is um, wretchedly stuck um, with terrible terrible um, social anxiety um, and uh, so they do meander over to the bookstore because they can't bear to talk to anyone. And then lo and behold, there is a book. You know, um, experiencing shyness as a Christian. And they think, oh. You know, suddenly they're noticed. Suddenly, you know, it's as if my church knows I'm here. Um, at Christchurch a few years ago, we, uh, I don't know, maybe you've seen um, various... Uh, um, Various people produce tiny little kind of uh, little booklets, almost like pamphlets. Um, you know, when you're, you know, after an affair, um, um, after an abortion, um, uh, when facing eating disorders, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Not, not, not a definitive word. You know, maybe 15, 20 um, kind of short pages. Um, and we've, we've put those in our foyer. So it's pretty much the first thing you notice when you come in through the door, which, which is just our attempt, just a little thing to try and say, this is the kind of stuff that we think about as a church. Um, and we want you to notice that straight away. Um, it's not something that we hide away. This is, this is, sort of, this is the business of, of church life. Um, you know, just trying to find ways of... Of, of emphasising. Um, uh, what other things? Um, but being careful with humour. Um, so easy, isn't it, to, to, to throw in a few therapy jokes or, you know, to, uh, to, to roll off a little, a little run of, of all the funny phobias that people can have. And, 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 and you know, it's very easy to do and it gets a laugh and and I'm sure I've done it many times myself. But actually, when I stop and think about it, I realise that you're communicating that this is, this is funny and silly um, instead of something that we take seriously. Um, we've talked about those already. Um, uh, and I guess the other way that I think we overcome stigma is, is by just um, saying these are things that we want to think carefully about so that we run a seminar um, on eating disorders. Um, or on addictions or whatever. Um, you know, it's not, again, it's not, we're not turning people into experts, but merely the fact that you know, we're going to have an evening where we just get somebody in or we've got somebody in our congregation who's done a bit of thinking about depression um, and we're just going to think a little bit about depression and pray for those in our church family uh, for whom this is, a, this is a struggle. I mean, how, kind of, how good would that be um, for the for the ten or twenty people in your in your church who struggle with depression, to know that the church is thinking about it and wanting people to pray about it, make a big difference, wouldn't it? Um, you'd feel you know, you'd feel as if oh, I, I can talk about this because my church is talking about this. I don't need to hide it away.
Yeah, and, and, and it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a complicated thing to do that. You know, most of us at the end of our, of our sort of formal time on a Sunday, you know, probably say, you know, stay for coffee if you can or there's some refreshments, you know, in the hall at the back. It, it doesn't take a lot to say, um, you know, our formal time's over but our for informal time together now starts. Um, you know, we'd love you to stay. We see this as a big part of community life together. Um, and here's a thought, you know, maybe t today seek out somebody that you've not spoken to before. Yeah, just find a way of just saying, this matters to us, we think about this. Um, you're right. Um, here's something that I'll get you to think about for a minute. Um, I've heard this said in various different ways many times uh, over the years. With my mental health struggles, the people who've shown most interest, been most ready to talk, and simply been there for me have been my non-Christian friends. Um, and my question to you is, why? Just, just uh, two minutes, because I'm going to... Yes, possibly even 90 seconds. Talk, talk to the person next to you. What do you think? Why, 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 why is that so, if you agree with it? I, I think it's true. Okay, that was your 90 seconds. Um, any, any, what do, what do you think? Any, um, maybe this isn't true in your church, but for, for those of us for whom we think it probably is true, um, wh wh why do you think this might be? Oriel? Because, because they, uh, okay, because they saw you as a sufferer and not a sinner. Yes, okay, okay. Um, Yes, interesting. Um, they, didn't, they didn't bring the category of, of sin to bear. So in as much as on my original spectrum, you know, mental health problems are a, a, a you know, sin and repentance issue, um, there is still a, a chunk of that that's very dominant. Thank you. Other, other, other thoughts about why this might be so? Kitty? Yes, um, we're, we're busy um, kind of writing a script for ourselves that is all about joy and hope and, and contentment. Um, and this person in front of me, who, for whom those are not realities, um, is, is a little bit disorientating and disturbing. Um, and I like the way that you also say, and perhaps reminds me that I'm not quite as sorted as I'm pretending to be just at the minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it could be that the person just feels that they're not Christian friends are just uh, more available and the Christian friends just seem busy and just maybe just don't feel like they have the time for them so they're more likely to go see Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we're, we're busy, busy at our prayer meetings, busy at our, um, uh, our home groups, busy with our rotors and funnily enough, people get lost in the midst of all of that um yeah thank you um yeah one more
Yes, thank you. Um, that, that we can be a little bit programmed um, and we don't create the space for these. I, I think that is right. Um, and I think all of the responses you've had sort of um, tie in with, um, with, with what, I, what I think of as the culture of a church, um, and I include the culture of my church. Um, so many of us, we, you know, we, we want our churches to be successful whatever that means. We want our churches to be efficient. Um, we, we like the idea of our churches being sorted, you know, which is the sort of the organised bit. You know, and mess gets in the way of that. Um, and I think that is, um, that, that is very much a, a, an element. Um, you, you, you must have you must have heard um, the, the the miracle of the church car park. Um, you know that um, I know family sets off to, to church if you've got a church with a car park and um, they've been dragging you know dragging their teenage children into the car. Um, husband and wife have been shouting at one another. Um, there's a stormy silence in the entire journey there, apart from one or two snapped angry comments. Um, uh, pull up in the church car park um, uh, the door opens they walk to the door of the church um, and the person there is greeting say oh morning Roberts how are you fine lovely thank you very much it's a miracle you know what happened something in the church car park produced a miracle from the time they left the car to the time they arrived at the door praise the Lord um, we, we put on our Sunday best you know, we, we, we love to give the impression that all is well. And, um, and as long as we are doing that. I mean, sometimes I put, I put it like this. You know, on Sunday, someone will say to you, how are you? Um, can you find a way of giving a 30-second answer that is honest? Because when, when people say, oh, hi, how are you? You know that they don't want to say, well, glad you asked. <laughs> Come and you know, you know that they, 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 they're not offering half an hour of you to pour your heart out to them, usually. And so you're not going to do that. You know, that would be socially inappropriate. That would be odd. But is there a way of, of having a 30-second version that conveys honesty? Because if, if you do that, you are contributing to a shift in the culture of the church. Here we talk honestly to one another. Here we find ways of speaking about the reality of the struggles of life. Um, I, do, I don't care. <laughs> you've, you've asked it. You're going you're gonna to get my honest answer, whether you were honest in asking it. Because you've given me an opportunity to contribute to a shift in the culture of the church. Um, and next time, when you ask me, you'll know that you, you are asking it honestly, <laughs> or else you're going to avoid me. Um, I, I think the, the other thing that I would, I would pick up in here is... I think, um, and, it, and it slightly ties into your, your point, Oriel, um, I think the reason that, that, that often our non-Christian friends are, are better with us in these, in these kind of contexts is because they're not trying to fix us. You know, we think we've got Jesus, we've got the gospel, I should be able to sort you out. Um, and so instead of being willing to just listen which I've emphasised several times uh, during the day, um, and take time, we're trying to look for the silver bullet because we think, you know, we ought, you know, surely we've got something to, do to make this better. Um, and, and the non-Christian doesn't think that. So they will just listen. Uh, and I think that may be a difference. Um, so I, I, think it's, I think it's something to do with us not, not really believing the gospel. I don't think we believe that Jesus came to, to um, not, for, um, not for the healthy, but for the sick. Um, or if we were sick once, we're not sick anymore. Um, you know, we, don't, we don't go on occupying the place uh, of being a needy sinner. Um, so you know, within our church family, it's a twee phrase, but we, we, we use it just to try and be a, a reminder to us that you know, we're not trying to be a museum for saints. We're trying to be a hospital for sinners. That's what we are when we gather Sunday by Sunday. We're, we're sick people who've come for the medicine of the gospel again.
and again and again. And, it, and, if, you, and if you sort of inculcate that to your church family, you know, it, it, it begins to take root um, and resists that tendency to, to want to be, um, you know, shine in with our Sunday best. Um, we're running out of time, so I'm going to ignore those. Um, I'm going to ignore that as well. Um, feeling de-skilled. Um, I, I think what I would say in relation to feeling de-skilled is um, just, just ask, don't pretend. I mean, if you've, if, if, if you've no idea um, uh, what, what is meant by um, struggling with PTSD um, or intrusive thoughts, um, ask. Don't pretend you know. Um, you know, humility would, would just ask, ask some questions. Um, and when you're feeling out of your depth, um, involve others. Um, maybe there is somebody who understands and is better equipped to, to help than you are. Well, then draw them in, um, if that's appropriate. Um, and, and find out some stuff. You know, somebody says, I'm really struggling with our, you know, with our youngest who's um, just been diagnosed with ADHD. Um, and you are one of their best friends, well, find out about ADHD. You know, so you can, you can understand and, and, and support better uh, as a result. Um, or, you know, invest in getting some training. Um, you know, that's... You know, the, the, the courses and the stuff that we run with Biblical Counselling UK, you know, we try to make a contribution in that area. There'll be other people who, who do similar things. Uh, improve our capacity um, to speak well um, with others. Um, 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 that I mean, I've mentioned the book before. That's that's you know a contribution, and I've mentioned the certificate course. I'm going to just stop because um, because I did promise I'd try and carve out a bit of time for questions, and we've only got seven minutes. So, or, or we can finish early. Um, either is fine by me. Genevieve. Um, Steve, could you say something about some of the symptoms of depression that you describe and what's so very common following a bereavement? Could you just say something about that? Um, it, it, it's, it's one of the things that is that is bubbling around at the moment. Oh, sorry, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, the, 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 Genevieve was saying that the, the symptoms of depression um, will also be fairly prominent in, in, following a bereavement. And um, any, any thoughts about that? Uh, it's something that is bubbling around at the moment, you know, where you know, people are expressing concern that grieving is... is is, is one of these things that is being medicalized, is being sort of pathologized. Is you know, if if you're not you know if you're not pulling through your um, your bereaved state, you know, within a year or two, it's a problem. Um, as if we cannot create space for grief, um, and I think we must do that, um, and understand that grief is, you know, even when there's a hope of glory. And, and, you know, it's a believer that we have lost. Um, you can still miss them, and you can still hurt, um, and you can still cry, and have people cry with you, um, and to, to make space for that, and accept that it, that can last a long time, and not say we need to, you know, it's, it's a bit like the comment to the back about, you know, negative emotions, not, not allowing those, um, to make space for them. Yeah. What do you do when you're dealing with a situation and that person concerns you, they don't want help, but you feel that they need support? How do you step into that and be loving and biblical and honour God? Yeah, um, uh, again, question. Uh, how, if if you, you're worried about somebody and you're wanting them to get kind of more input and they're resisting that, um, yeah, really tricky. Um, I, I think to... Um, I think to find a low threshold way of saying, listen, um, I'm not an expert, you're not an expert, maybe there is more going on than neither of us knows about. You know, what about we just check that out? You know, how about a, you know, 
just, just a, a chat it through with your GP. It may be there's, you know, maybe there isn't anything, you know, more that needs to be done, but it, it wouldn't hurt just to, to sound it out. I mean, just to, to try and lower the threshold rather than to say, I know that you need X, and, you know, so you're, so you're pushing. You know, when you push people, they tend to push back. Um, that, that would just be a quick thought that pops into my head. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, I sometimes, a few years ago, um, we, we had in our church, uh, we're coming to a prayer meeting, a monthly prayer meeting where we, we make a big thing of people coming to our prayer meeting, and we had two people um, both in imminent danger of death, uh, one with acute pancreatitis and the other with an eating disorder. And it felt it profoundly... Um, uh, kind of disturbing to me that we were going to pray for one and not for the other. And yet, I, at another level, I understood why we were going to pray for one and not the other. It's, it, it's really tricky. I, I, don't, I don't have... Um, you know, it comes back to the issues of stigma and privacy and confidentiality. Um, I, I think to some extent, it is the, the more that... Um, thinking about these things becomes part of what we do in church, the easier that will become. Um, and also, I think, um, having conversations with people about what it is they, they want when they're in a place to be able to take that decision. Because I think the difficulty is when somebody is acutely unwell with a mental health struggle, they're not in a place to be able to make a considered judgment about what they would like communicated to the church family. Um, and so trying to, trying to think about that in advance, if it's somebody who um, intermittently struggles in that sort of way, may be something worth considering. But, but I, I just think it is, it is really difficult. Yes. Um, so, a question about when when somebody is talking to you about about significant struggles that they have, but they want you to keep it to yourself, and you feel out of your depth. Um, I, I think that um, I, 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 without, without getting too um, sort of, if somebody if somebody says this, I want to talk to you, but it needs to be confidential. I do have some sort of a knee-jerk response and says, of course we can speak privately, but, you know, um, if, 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 I, if I think that, you know, you're in big trouble, I might need to talk to somebody else. You'd understand that, wouldn't you? You know, I think I might start a conversation in that kind of way. Um, I guess that's easier for me to do as a sort of a pastor and a professional than it is in a friendship situation, but, but somehow kind of... Um, moving into that sort of zone. And, and then I guess it is, it is to say, um, just to be honest, to say, look, I feel out of my depth. Um, you're talking about things that feel really difficult and I can see how much you're hurting and how much you're struggling and I don't, I don't feel as though I'm able to help you in the way that I think... Um, I'd love, to, I'd love you to be helped. Could we think about, you know, involving somebody else? Um, would you be open to that? And, and if so, who do you think it ought to be? You know, to have that, just, 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 just to be honest about where you find yourself. Um, that's, yeah, but, it, but I think it's a, a difficult situation. Um, we're at four o'clock. Josh is very good at finishing on time. <laughs> I'm sure people will have trains and buses to catch. Um, I'm also sure that people would love to talk more um, with Steve. Are you able to hang around for a few more minutes, Steve? Yep, so if you want to and you're able to, there's a few more minutes. Um, let's just express our appreciation for Steve and all his tours today.
Um, in terms of helping Caroline and some of the students tidy up, if um, cups can go in the bins out there, um, and the, you can leave the questionnaires on the chairs or put them on one of the tables at the back um, to help Caroline with tidying up. Thanks everyone for coming, um, and remember, 7th of February is the next team teaching day.